Hello, my name is Dr. Stephen Bradburn from TopTipBio.com and in this video tutorial I'm going to show you how to use GraphPad Prism to create a line graph. So why are line graphs useful? Line graphs are perfect graph styles to use when data are presented over time, such as that presented on screen. Here, each data point is connected by a straight line. A subtype of a line graph is one called a spaghetti plot, and this is where individual tracings for each subject is plotted onto the same line graph. Note, a line graph is not the same as a linear regression plot. In a line graph, each adjacent data point is connected with a straight line. However, in a linear regression plot, there is a regression line, or best fitting line, which may or may not pass through some of the data points. Linear regressions are explained in more detail in a separate video tutorial. In this video tutorial, I will show you how to create this line graph. Specifically, this data is from a Morris Water Maze assessment, which is a memory test in a set of young and old rats. The rats are tested in a water maze and the time taken to find a hidden platform is recorded. The rats are then tested over 8 days. So let's go into PRISM and begin the tutorial. For this tutorial I'm going to select an XY table and graph. I'm going to enter and import data into a new table. My X values are going to be numbers and my Y values I'm going to enter 8 replicates in side by side subcolumns. I'm going to click the create button. I'm just going to paste in the data that I have prepared earlier into the sheet. In this data set there are 8 replicates or rats in each group. The X values represent the number of days going from 1 to 8. And the data itself are repeated measures over the days in the 8 different reps recorded in seconds. So to create a line graph, since we have our data entered into our data sheet, I'm going to click on the connected graph sheet on the left hand window to open up the graph wizard. For a line graph, you want to ensure that the XY graph family is selected. And there are multiple types of line graphs that can be created. There is the points and connecting line with error bars, where the summary data of replicates are plotted, such as the mean and error. You can then specify what the error represents. There is also the points with error bars without the joining lines. There is also the repeated measures with each replicate connected. So this is where all of the data are plotted onto the graph with each replicate indicated on a separate line. This is otherwise known as a spaghetti plot. And there's also individual replicates with means or medians connected. If you scroll across, you'll also find connecting line with error bars, which is similar to the points and connecting line with error bars, just without the points. So for this video tutorial, I'm going to select the points and connecting line with error bars. Under the plot drop down menu, you can change what is plotted so in other words, what do the points represent? Here you can have the mean only without an error bar, the mean with error bar, the geometric mean, the geometric mean with an error bar, or the median or the median with an error bar. I'm going to select mean with error bar. And for the error bar themselves, you can specify what you want these error bars to represent. Is it the standard deviation, the standard error of the mean, the 95% confidence intervals, or the range? this tutorial I'm going to select the standard deviation. I'm going to click the OK button to create my graph. So this is the basis of our line graph for this video tutorial and as it is it needs some formatting. Firstly you may want to adjust the colors of the line graph itself and to do this you would click on the change colors button at the top where you can select from a pre-designed set of themes. The change colors button is explored in more detail in a separate quick tip video tutorial. But for now, I'm going to click on the Format Graph button at the top to open up the Format Graph window so we can adjust the appearance of our line graph. It is here that you can change the appearance of the line graph, including the symbols, the error bars, and the connecting line between the symbols. So for this settings at the top, I have my young or my first group selected, so all of my changes will be made to the young group. As within the graph wizard, you can change the appearance of the plots themselves and what they represent in this drop down menu here, and also what the error bars represent in this drop down menu here. 
Underneath, under the Show Symbols header, here you can change the appearance of the symbols themselves in terms of the colour, the shape and the size. So for this, I'm going to change my symbol colour of my Young group to be a blue. I'm also going to change the size of my symbols from 4 to 3, making them slightly smaller. And I'm going to click the Apply button to preview my changes. So notice now the Young group is blue in colour and the symbol sizes have been reduced. What I'm now going to do is just toggle to my old group. And I'm going to change the colour of my old group symbols to be a purple. And I'm also going to reduce the size of the symbols from 4 to 3. And I'm going to change the shape from a square to a triangle and then click the apply button. So now we have some colour onto our line graph. In the options underneath there is also the ability to show bars, spikes or drop lines. So this option will include a vertical bar or drop line which will drop from the data point to the x-axis. So this provides a means of making a bar chart for example with bars at specific points along the x-axis instead of being evenly spaced. For example, if I click the options for my old group and click apply, notice that a drop line has been added which starts at the x-axis and goes all the way up to the data points. For this line graph, I'm going to leave this option unchecked. So let's move on to the next settings, which is changing the appearance of the error bars. So here you can change the color of the error bars and you can also change whether the error bars should go in both direction or just above or below the symbol themselves. You can also change the style of the error bars, so what the actual error bars look like, and the thickness of the error bars. I'm going to change the appearance of my error bars from two points to one point to make them slightly thinner. So to do this, I'm going to change the global settings. The ability to change the global settings is explored in more detail in a separate quick tip video tutorial. But briefly, I'm going to press and hold down the control key on my keyboard while I change my thickness from two to one point and then click the apply button. So now the thickness of the error bars on both the young and the old data sets has been reduced to one point. Another thing that you might want to change on the line graph is the connecting line and curve. So this is the line that connects each individual data point. Specifically here you can change the colour and the style of the connecting lines, also the thickness and the pattern. There's also the ability to start the lines at the origin. So by ticking this option here, notice now that for the old group, the connecting line starts at zero and then works its way up to the first data point. There is also the option to leave a gap at the symbols where the line meets the symbols. So if I show you what this would look like, notice that where the line meets the symbols, there is a slight gap in between. For this example, I'm going to leave both of these options unticked and then click the apply button. Finally, there's also the ability to show an area fill. So this is where you can fill or shade the area below or above the connected points. So if I click this option to show you what this would look like in the old group, notice now that the area underneath the old group has been shaded. You can adjust these settings further by altering the fill color or applying a fill pattern. You can then change where the fill occurs, whether this is below or above, or to the X or within error bands. But for this example, I'm going to uncheck the area fill and click the apply button. Under the additional options header, there's the ability to plot a right Y axis as well as a left Y axis. So this may be useful if you have multiple measures that you want to plot on the same graph. There's also the ability to show a figure legend, which is very important in a line graph considering the reader needs to know what each line represents. And you can adjust what the legend shows, whether this is just the symbol, the symbol in line, the line, the long line, or the symbol in long line. So I'm going to leave the symbol in line option checked. So I'm fairly happy with all of these settings and I'm going to click the OK button to return back to the graph. So now our graph has some color and appearance changes to it. I want to now tweak the settings further by adding a Y axis title. So to do this, I'm going to click the Y title that's already there, and then I'm going to enter latency in seconds because my results are recorded in seconds. Also, I want to trim the top of the X axis so it reduces the space to the right of the data. So this area here. So to change the axes, you can either double click on the axes themselves or click the format axes button at the top. 
to the Format Axes button can be found at the top, and then I'm going to toggle to the X Axes tab. Usually, GraphPad automatically determines the range and interval of the axes themselves, but I'm going to uncheck this option so I can edit these settings. And I'm going to change the major tick intervals to be 1, so every day is labelled. And I'm also going to change the maximum value from being 10 to 9, so this will reduce that added spacing to the right. And then click the Apply button. So this looks a lot better now. Another thing that you may wish to do is to add ticks or grid lines to the plot, either on the X and or Y axes. For example, in this specific data set, the Morris Water Maze, the test involves a training and a testing phase, so you may want to divide the plot into two to show this difference. So for example, under the additional ticks and grid lines, if I put at X equals 4.5 and tick the line option, click apply, notice that a vertical line has been applied at day 4.5. You could also go one step further and shade part of the graph. So for example, if I click on the details button and I add a new tick, uh, x equals 1, at the bottom where it states fill shade between this tick and x equals, if I tick this and select the 4.5 tick and change the colour to be a grey colour and click the OK button, and then click the apply button to preview my changes. Notice now that the left side of the graph has been shaded. You can also now remove this additional tick line at 4.5 by unticking this option, clicking apply. So this just makes it easier to differentiate between a training and test phase for this particular example. So I'm going to click the OK button now to return back to the graph. A few more things I'd like to tweak to the graph before I finish is changing the title of the graph by clicking on data one. I'm going to call this Morris Water Maze. Additionally, I'm going to insert some text by using the text tool. I'm going to call this first one training. And I'm going to bold this text and move this onto the shaded area. I'm also going to do the same and call this test. So now the reader knows that the shaded area is the training phase and the white area on the right is the test phase. And finally, I'm just going to move my figure legend closer to the graph. Another thing that you may wish to do in a line graph is apply significance lines or symbols onto the graph to show areas of statistical significance. So this feature is explored in more detail in a separate quick tip video tutorial. So that wraps up the line graph. So in conclusion, You've learned about creating and interpreting a line graph in PRISM. And you understand that line graphs are great when you want to show data over time. A variation of a line graph is known as a spaghetti plot. And this is where you can create multiple line graphs for each individual or replicate set. And you also understand that there are additional features within PRISM to highlight areas of the line graph, such as shading.